the final part of this video then is the um, compound or multi-line statement. So these are things like branching statements, ifs um, and loops like for and while. So in all programming languages you end up having to identify a group or a block of instructions that need to go together um, and form a unit um, somehow that you, that, that's going to be executed all, all together. So in some programming languages this is done by um, putting curly braces at the start and the end of the uh, set of instructions that go together. Um, some languages use um, words like begin and do um, and finish it with end or end if or things like that. Um, Python has a quite a unique approach to identifying a block of code. Python uses the number of white spaces, the indentation of the lines to tell you which lines go together in a block. So all the lines that have the same level of indentation or indeed include more indentation all go together into one block. Um, then there's one other general rule and that is that the line immediately before a block will always end up with a colon um, before it. So um, the indented block will always have a, a, a colon um, on the end of the line immediately before it. There's in fact no set rule about the number of spaces that you need to indent things by. Um, can be as many or as few as you like, but nearly all Python programs tend to use four um, as a nice compromise between making it obvious that this is indented, but not ending up if you've got several levels of indentation with your code stretching halfway across the screen. There is however a problem that you need to be aware of if you write code in a text editor that is not Python aware. And that's to do with what happens with the tab key. So in most editors, the tab key um, produces a single tab character that is then displayed as an indentation that's of a certain width. Um, so it might look like you've indented it by a bunch of spaces, but in fact you haven't. You've just inserted one tab character and then your editor goes and displays that tab character with the width that matches up to a typically eight space characters. Um, but then Python says, well, there's only one white space character here, that's a tab character. And so that's not at the same level of indentation as the next line where I have eight space characters. And therefore it gets very confused as to what's going on. So this can lead to horrendous bugs um, and be really confusing to try and fix out. So the answer is, is to not mix tabs and spaces. Um, most Python aware editors, things like Spider or maybe the Microsoft VS Code um, uh, amongst others, um, automatically convert tab characters into the equivalent numbers of spaces um, so that you don't get in a mess. So basically it's always better to go and uh, write things in a, um, uh, in a Python aware editor and save yourself the grief of trying to work out whether that was a tab or eight spaces. OK, so on to the actual um, multi-line statements. So first we're going to deal with conditional statements. So this is sort of branching logic. If something is true, do this. Otherwise, do that. That sort of idea. And in Python, this is done with an if, elif, else combination. So if something on the first line is true, then do that block of code. Otherwise, go and check the next condition and do that block of code. Otherwise, go and do the else um, block. So here's an example. So we're doing if x is equal to 123, print x was 123. If x was not equal to 123, then check whether y was equal to 123 and print y was 123. And if that's not true either, then do the else. So print neither x nor y was 123. Now, in our example, x and y are both 123, but you'll see what happens here is that it just says, ah, x is 123, we're going to do that. So in fact, you need to go and, would need to go and do a separate test if you want to identify that both x and y were 123. Um, that's perfectly possible, but you then need to make sure you put things in the right order. So if you want to do that, you'd want to do if x equal, equals 123 and y is equal to 123, print, they're both 123. L if x equals equals 123, print x equals 
print 100, x is 123, lf y equals 123, print y is 123, else print neither is 123. So you do need to think a little bit about the order in which you do those tests and to make sure that you don't get a, a positive test before you were expecting it um, and, and to write things in the right way round. And as I said, you can also use the Boolean operators to build quite complicated tests for uh, if statements. And so then on to loops. Uh, Python offers two types of loops, uh, a for loop and a while loop. And I'm quite often I'm asked about how to know the difference between a for and a while, and when you should use a for and when you should use a while. And the answer is basically that a for loop is used when you know how many times the loop has to run, or at least how many, what's the maximum number of times a loop has to run. So e.g. when you're counting over something, like the elements in a list, or the lines in a file, um, uh, something where you, you're basically counting up over, over something which is definitely going to have a finite end to it. So here's an example, we create a list of numbers, um, so digits 1 to 9, and we simply iterate over that list for doing for number in list of numbers and we're going to simply print out the number and you see it's not really very exciting. In contrast a while loop um, you use when you need to know that you want to carry on doing something while some condition is true. So it's you're not counting over a fixed number of items unless you're counting you're keeping on growing the loop whilst some condition is true, and when the condition isn't true, you're going to stop doing it. So in this case, we're simply going to keep on asking the user to give a number until the user puts in a number that is bigger than 100. Um, so in this while loop, we start off, um, in order to go and test whether x is less than 100, we have to have a value for x. So that very first line is just making sure that x has a value before we get to the, the start of the while loop. And then in the first time we hit that while loop, x is 0, so it says yes, OK. x is less than 100, so it prints x is 0, asks us for a new value of x, goes back round to the while loop, says is x less than 100, and if the user's put in a number less than 100, it'll print it out again and carry on and round and round and round. And then eventually the user gets bored, puts in a big number, and it prints finish the loop and gives the final value of x. If x on that first line where we set it equal to 0, if we set it equal to 100, then when we got to that first while statement, we'd have while is less than, while x is less than 100. If x is equal to 100, that's not true. And so what would happen then is it would have just skipped right the way over the print x is x and um, input, and it would have instead gone straight and say it had finished the loop. So if, when you come to the while loop, that condition is not true, then it's not going to execute the loop at all. So before you go into the while loop, if you want it to execute the loop at least once, you need to make sure that the condition is false when you start. So again, you just have to work through the, the logic as it goes through line by line by line and check that it's doing what you think it's doing. So the summary of this revision video, we've uh, just very briefly reviewed how to write mathematical expressions in Python and the Python operators. We've reviewed the rules about variable names and data types. Uh, we've reviewed the use of print and input, and we've gone back over the basic branching and loop structures in Python. The next unit of this syntax tutorials, we're going to be doing a bit more about those loops um, and looking at some more detail about how to use them um, effectively.